is that we planted about five plants three or four years ago and now there's probably about 75 plants here. So what we found with milkweed is you'll plant them but when they throw their seed, the seed's gonna land and it's gonna be happy where it's happy. So we'll plant them, but a lot of times they're just gonna, they're almost weak if you're lucky. Um, so this is them. Here's the aphids right here. The ones that folks are asking about, right? That plant looks healthy. I mean, I would rather not have the aphids, but anything we do is probably gonna hurt eggs or caterpillars. So we're not gonna do anything. If this was tomatoes, we might do something, right? So we're planting the milkweed. I got a size 11 at about 12 to 18 inch intervals. What that's gonna do is create a nice sized plant, about five feet wide, right? A nice patch for the, the monarchs to find the food. So here's another one here. And you can see, we just kind of go in a crisscross pattern. This one's not 18 inches apart. That volunteer no longer works with us. We got rid of them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But this is what we're looking for. We don't want to space them out five feet apart. Eventually they could grow five feet each, but let's not. The stuff's free, like, let's, let's just plant it. So here is how we're going to plant. We're going to dig our hole. This garden gets watered twice a month, by the way. That's it, right. twice a month. Yeah, some people think too much for natives. We were almost killing our manzanita already. So it just it just got watered on Monday. So the first thing I, I need you guys to do is a few steps. The first one is plant as soon as possible. Plant today, tomorrow. If they're still with you on Sunday, like you guys are you're gonna kill your plant. The reason is everyone talks mess on Home Depot and Lowe's. Those people can't take care of plants. The reason they can't is because there's 10 different soils and plants on their shelf. It's so hard to do. Do yourself a favor and just get them in the ground. If you're not a nursery, even if you have skills, put them in the ground. Just put them in the ground. So that's the first thing. Put, plant them as fast as you can. The second is before you plant them, make sure they're watered. Right? They're going on a marathon. You wouldn't drink all night, drink coffee all morning, and then run your marathon. You would eat pasta get some Gatorade in you, whatever you do, wake up and then run your marathon. So make sure they're watered. Don't give them, I mean, we're gonna give them water in the ground, but they need water in the pot. The third thing is don't beat them up when you get them out of the pot. It's very easy, you turn it upside down. Let me, can I, let me have you guys do this so we can show you. There's one, do you think we can do one, sir? Let's try it out, let's try it out. And then over here, and I'm going to show you, uh, not, not yet, I want to show you guys. Because we don't need to break the roots, we don't need to beat the plant up. All you do is turn it upside down. This is the neck of the plant, right? So put your fingers, turn it upside down, and then just push one time. Wow. We're going to push. We're going to, yeah, there. there it is. Apply pressure Where'd here. Would you push the button? Yep. And then just shake it out. And if you can't, then we definitely do not want you at the nursery as a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to do. You don't need to do no this. The you don't squeeze yeah. this because uh, I've thrown you a good plant. This is amazing. What this plant has learned here, we want to carry it. We don't want to break these relationships. This was this morning. That's how good a grower I am. It was about six weeks. Yeah. So upside down. Oh, right? I worked for the city of LA. They told us to squeeze the heck out of the pot. Do we want to? I have a whole other class on the city of LA. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you don't break up the root ball. Negative. Never. Ne well, I'm not saying it's just not here. A good plant doesn't need the root ball broken up. These are all things this plant. I see this as a grade. This is coming from second grade and it's going to third grade. Why would you want to? Break. This guy learned two plus two. He learned how to write. This is all really good. We don't want to mess that up. If you if you take it out and it's root bound and all that, that guy was in second grade for eight years, right? <laughs> so we do need to break that up. But this is a. I don't know where this nursery. This is an amazing nursery. Look at how great this is. What are these little round things? In? That's that's a uh, fertilizer. Oh, 
Yeah. So now I've dug the hole as deep as the plant. Right there. And here's the most important part. The, the hole is wide. And this happens a lot. The people don't. We need this guy's naked now. We need to cover him 360 with the blanket. That's good beer. The Made West? That's <laughs> that beer? That your shirt right there, Made West. That's good. I love that beer. So we need to cover, right? So I see people not dig wide enough and they leave this area exposed and the plant can't grow there. The plant wants to touch soil and when it touches the air, the roots get burned back and they won't get established. So make sure we cover all of him. And here's what might shock you. We're gonna push as hard as we can. We wanna make the soil just like this because what that'll do is trap water so we need to water less but it'll make sure when the roots want to grow they'll hit soil instead of air so I'm gonna push this as hard as I can and Julio, I do that to all the plants I put in the ground like do they all want to be like that um, you know you don't have to do it with tomatoes and chiles because you're gonna water every two days and they're weeds anyway they're, they're just but with native plants this is what we want to do okay. so now we've planted as soon as we can we made sure they were wet when they went in. We were easy with them when we took them out. We packed them down so there's no air. And now we're gonna give them two gallons of water. Two the gallons. first watering, two gallons. Wow. The two second gallons. watering, two gallons. Wow. And then after that, water however you water everything else. Wow. So these have gotten two gallons, then again two gallons, and now they get watered every two weeks. That's it. It's the most important thing is to give them a lot of water the first two times and then you're good. So I'm going to show you what two gallons looks like and we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> it's a lot of water. <laughs> Let me show you. Two gallons of water would be this on full blast for about, oh we counted it the other day. This was five gallons and about it was like 40 seconds. So this would be full blast for about about 20 seconds. But the problem is the soil won't take it all at once. It'll start running off. So that's about seven seconds. Well, you left a little cut, cup around it. I did, yeah. I left the cup so it can hold the water. On a slope, you're gonna be there for five days water. It's hard on a slope. Um, so I'm gonna come back and do this about four or five more times. And then I know the water has set and it got under the plant. Too many times I'll go to a, a landscape that has problems and they never watered it deep. You can pull the plants out and the, the roots are burning at the bottom. The only thing that's wet is the top and they didn't pack it down hard. So that's first. I'm saying that was about a quarter of a gallon. Maybe half a gallon now, a little bit over. I'm gonna do it three or four more times. You guys don't have to stay here for this, but that's what we want. We want to give them a lot of water. They're packed in tight, they sit in, and then we can water them one more time like that. After that, every two weeks. How soon before the second water? And Simi Valley, Calabasas, Oxnard. I would say about 10 days. Two gallons separated by 10 days? Yes, yeah, because two gallons in clay soil, which most of us have clay soil, that stays wet forever. <laughs> and we're not trying to get them used to water. We actually want to send their roots down and get used to going deep. We don't want shallow roots. So most of you guys, well, maybe not, but a lot of people would have already been happy there. Yeah. That's no. And it's even harder when we plant bigger plants. It's even harder to get the water further down. So I think about three more of those are good. And that's it. So we have plants to give out. We would like to give you guys five plants, maximum each. There's seed, there's some pots to take. We would love for you guys to help us out in the field every Saturday. Um, we also and, have Sophia from um, the Visitor Center. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Hi, hi, hi. I'm, I'm with Western National Parks Association. And I manage the stores here <laughs> and at Satwila. I'm in the Visitor Center. Hey. I'd love to invite you all in the Visitor Center. We're opening early Thank you. 
Thanks, you guys. I, I forgot one thing, guys. I want to show you the seed. I, that's, I want to show you. It's right here. We have bags on the seed. I'll answer the question right up to you. Oh. So here's how we collect the seed. That's a live plant. This is the seed right here. So it looks like a little green banana. It should be pretty firm. This guy is a shriveled banana. And the seed's a little small, but that seed might be good. But we like to see them a lot bigger. Like they, they want, we kind of like the size of my, of this finger right here. But this guy's open and this hair is what takes the seed, right? And the, the that was magical right there. That was pretty cool. <laughs> and so that's what we're out doing right now. The, the folks are collecting ripe stuff. They're collecting this super ripe stuff. And then we're putting these bags that allow air. So if we don't get here on time, it'll fall in here. And that's how we're going to collect too. You can see this here. So that's, but you can do this in your house. So you want the pod to be a little brownish? No, so once you see a pod forming, you want to pick a fat, thick one. You don't want any uh, wrinkles. You don't want it to be like, you should have good form. You should look like a banana. Oh, okay, so like, it's because it's red, not dried out at all. No. Once it's dried out, you can just pull it. What we're doing is, sometimes we have to walk a mile. We might not get there for another month, but it has a lot of seed, but the seed's not ready. If we pull it, it will be right. So, but we know it got pollinated and it looks good, so we're going to capture it. And not let it fly away. Okay, but right? it's, yeah, so you can't cut it off. If you're at your home, you wouldn't want to cut it off the plant. No. You want to capture it. At your home, if you see floss, then just go, just grab it. Okay. If you don't see floss, then bag it. It's a lot easier at your house though, because you probably just go out and just get it. But if you're not going to go out every day or every two days, then you can bag it. And we have, there are a lot of these around the parks that we forgot to get. <laughs> and then you'll see there's tags that say what we're doing. Um, so yeah. Thank you guys so much. Please take everything and help us out. Please.